All righty, it's time to clean up some pots, get some of the media back, and show you which of the orchids are leaving the patio, or possibly, depending on when this video airs, have already left the patio, and myself with a big mess of different kinds of media to clean up. And we are starting with Zygonesia murasaki komachi. Now, when you hear Zygonesia or Zygopetalum, then, well, what comes to mind? This orchid was growing just fine for me for the first couple of years while she was in my collection, and then I repotted her. And when we talk about Zygopetalums or Zygo anything, we know that the roots are super delicate. All I did on that first repot was to actually up-pot her. Didn't even touch the roots, didn't mess around, and well, behold, she never ever recovered. I even brought her in during the winter months of 23-24 because I used to have her outside when she was growing well and before the repot. And my winter temperatures dropped to 5 degrees Celsius outside, so I figured what I was going to do is just baby her for her first winter after the repot and only expose her to temperatures of 14 degrees Celsius during the winter, which is as low as they can get indoors. <laughs> and yeah, uh, it's not working out. Now, please don't hate me. There is another new growth growing at the base of one of the pseudobulbs. There are plenty of pseudobulbs, and if I were to put my mind to it, I would probably be able to rescue this orchid. But the one growth that has frazzled out is the third growth of the season that she tried to grow, and, well, I'm just done. And as the orchid gods would have it, with full transparency on the channel, this was all included in a live stream that I have not made public, which gives me the opportunity to unpot the orchids that I'm showcasing today, which thankfully I didn't do during the live stream. And you can see the roots are completely shot. And that is from an up pot. I didn't even fiddle with a root ball. Anyway, adios Zygonicia Murasaki Komachi. It was a pleasure growing you and blooming you while you gave me the opportunity. In all of the orchids I'm showcasing today, it is not them, it is me. Just in case I forget to say that moving forward, as we look at my Leptortis bicolor. This is a 2.0, by the way, and she came as a fabulous orchid. She was a gift from Tokyo World Mark and a Karen Orchids. I did an unboxing video on those, and all the orchids that came were just beautiful in quality. And this is what I have done with my Leptotis Bicolor 2.0. I normally do not replace orchids once they leave the patio, unless I know what went wrong with the OG, and then I make all the attempts to correct that with a replacement. And the reason I bought myself a 2.0 while my OG Leptotis was still in the collection was because the OG Leptotis came in an order that was abysmal, for lack of a better term. Anywho, the OG was also growing in Lekka and self-watering, just a very weak, abysmal orchid that I was trying to get to grow to strength. I started with a super healthy Leptotis. Long story short, this is what is going on. And she does look so much worse as the majority of these orchids do when it comes to this video. And that is because I just stopped caring for them after my mind had been made up. You have got to go. We are just not compatible for each other. Not given the current circumstances I am in. Maybe in six years, maybe in eight years, it depends on how things develop with my current situation, I will find replacements. But for the time being, there will be no more Leptotis bicolor on the patio. Because while I would love to mount this orchid in my conditions, then she would thrive and do much better. I could even get her to bounce back. I just don't have the capacity and the capability during the winter to do that. And then we can also talk about putting her into lava rock, which I could also do. However, there comes a time when even a rescue mission is just not on the cards. I have so much to focus on and deal with during the winter. This is not another one of those challenges that I need during those months. I apologize to Tokyo World Mark and Current Orchids for ruining such a beautiful orchid that they sent me. And then we have a seedling Dawiana variety Aurea that also didn't make it. Now, a seedling Dawiana Aurea during my winter months with the slow metabolism of orchids, if a seedling doesn't get exactly what they can get, should get, must get in order to perform and grow, then what they will get is pests because they get weaker and weaker and weaker. And that's a lot of gets in one sentence. But yes, this is what happened with my Dawiana. Now, 
I have a much larger Dawiana. She's growing well in Lekan self-watering, as was my Dawiana variety Aurea. However, winters after winters after winters have weakened this orchid because she did not get the conditions that she would prefer. Got weaker, weaker, and weaker. This past winter, she got scale, which I tried to treat. She lost her front leaf and since then has gone completely collapsio, as you can see. And yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. And I would probably push a little harder to try and rescue her if I didn't have the larger Dawiana doing great, even after her recent repot. So this is just another little one that I don't have to worry about anymore. And while I may sound really harsh at the moment, trust me, my mourning period is over. I've done all that. I've paid all my respects to these orchids before I even made the decision to get rid of them. The morning phase, oh, okay, I just said one thing, now I'm going to contradict myself. The morning phase for my long deep crossed with millery is not over. And I'm going to contradict myself again because I just said I do not replace orchids, even now if I knew what went wrong. And here I'm about to tell you that this is one orchid that I will replace. I feel I owe it to the two gentlemen that gifted me this orchid, Michael McCarthy, and Larry Jones, and she was a very healthy orchid when I unboxed her. I put her into my classic Rapiculus Lelia setup, lava rock, possibly a little bit of Akadama and grit, and semi-hydro. Well, I cannot tell you what went wrong with her. I really cannot, because I have a much more pathetic looking millery than when it arrived on the patio, and that orchid is just going bonkers. And if there was one orchid, as per the parents of this primary hybrid, my millery was the candidate that was going out the window, and that is why Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones said, in case you lose your millery, at least you will have a millery, even if it's a primary hybrid, in your collection, and that is why they gifted me this orchid. Well, what are the odds that this one went downhill? And like I said, I cannot explain it to you, but I owe these two gentlemen, and yes, when I find a long deep crossed with millery, I will replace her, because this is annoying and upsetting, so I apologize apologize to the two of you that I did not get this one to grow beautifully for you. Thank you to the two of you for your thoughtfulness. Watch this space. I don't know when I will find a replacement, but yeah, we're going to do this one again. I owe you. Ripping the band-aid off while I'm at it with apologies and feeling bad. Michael McCarthy, I am sorry. This is the Dendrobium aurantiflammeum that you gifted to me. She was doing really well. She's just in lava rock with semi-hydro, doing really well. And then she got spider mites. That was two summers ago, which we then limped over. Then she started to branch and things were looking okay. A little bit on the up and up. Not as good as she did the first year she was with me, but clearly recovering from the spider mites. And then Ratatouille took a chomp out of her. And I do not know about the transmission of pests and viruses from a rodent to an orchid. I don't know, but her leaves got some really weird little spottings. It's just not going to work out for us. Also, because my winter is so not conducive for the health and well-being of a weak aurantiflammeum that really doesn't appreciate cold weather. That's why she was only in lava rock, because I wasn't going to risk any evaporator cooling experiments with Lekka. So, Michael McCarthy, I am truly sorry. I'm going to call it with the aurantiflammeum. She will be leaving the patio, and for the foreseeable future, I will not be replacing this orchid. Aurantiflammeum does not like what I have to offer for six months of the year. Another one that is leaving the collection is my Setorcus Pretermisa. It's a struggling one also during my winter months. I thought it was going to be fine in orchid top with lava rock like my other Renantheras, but it got thrips and once you get the thrips then the orchid starts to weaken. Once you have a weak orchid, if the conditions aren't exactly the way they like, it is very difficult to recover them even though I put what was remaining of her roots into not always soaking her with water but into lava rock with water or nutrients depending. I'm done. I'm not going to do this anymore. We are in August. There is just no way that by November she is going to look or do any better. I have made up my mind. I am not going to to limp this one through the winter anymore, just like with the Dawiana, green or not. It goes against my nature to do this, but I am starting to get used to it. And I might as well get used to it because at the end of the day, I've got Tolumnias that still appear to have some green on them. And these are the last two of a collection of 19. Yes, 
you heard correctly, 19 Tolumnias in 2020. And these are the last two of them. In 2021, I wasn't paying attention and all my Tolumnias got a scale infestation. And while I tried to tie them over, get that corrected, keep them clean, get them to come back, seaweed, calcium nitrate, calcium magnesium, carry them out during the winters on a tray, giving them as much light as possible during the months of the year where they are not happy in my climate. All of that since 2021, we are now in August of 2024, I'm done. Once the bracts of Tolumnias at the base look like this, the roots have no chance of coming through. That means if there's any roots that are visible and if they are, let's say, not viable anymore, the orchid pretty much starts to dehydrate bit by bit. I was misting the base of these orchids, risking that they would rot out, but at least I wanted one fan to try and get some roots to grow. I was unsuccessful and well, with that, I still have two Tolumnias left in my collection. One is doing better than the other and if there are to be no Tolumnias in my collection moving forward, one day, when things improve, I will have some Tolumnias back, but now is clearly not the time. Anyway, <laughs> ouch. Moving forward, this one is not of my doing, maybe a little bit, but this is what's left of my Catlia Schilleriana before we say goodbye to her. My Catlia Schilleriana actually <laughs> is the orchid and the only reason I have a Phalaenopsis Schilleriana because the order did a switcheroo and sent me a Phalaenopsis Schilleriana and I had not ordered that. I wanted a Catlia Schilleriana and she then did arrive and she was super healthy and I plonked her into Lekka straight away. At first a classic semi-hydroponic setup then I plonked her into a self-watering pot and she just grew beautifully. No problems whatsoever. But she arrived with two winters where she had heat mats and she had lights going. So everything was working out just tickety-boo. And then I repotted her because, you know, needs must. The orchid was growing bigger. <laughs> and well, turns out she had fusarium. And the fusarium managed to get hold when I couldn't use heat mats anymore and I couldn't supplement with lights anymore. And the orchid got weak, weak, weak and then we had an issue because now fusarium that was lurking in her could take over. And here we are. This was the second piece. The first piece left the patio straight away after the repot. The second piece was a tiny little part of a second seedling and I thought, hmm, the roots were still kind of like looking healthy, growing at the time. And well, here we are. You can see what's going on. She is the closest to oregano. Hmm. Let me take that back. We've got one more orchid to go. Anyway, she is oregano and she is leaving the patio. One less orchid to worry about if it's going to transmit anything during the winter months. Yikes. Always a spooky thing when you're dealing with fusarium. Anyway, speaking of oregano, I'm not saying this is going to be last and least, but for this video, it's last and least. Um, walk of shame here. Moi, absolutely walk of shame. I'm not going to go into great detail. This is my doing, clearly. This is my symbidium. Um, neglect up until July. Neglect, but to the point that she was still okay. I could have you know, unpotted her in a timely manner, divided her in a timely manner, and gotten some good pieces out of her in a timely manner. But I didn't. I procrastinated. Ad infinitum. But I did give her water on several occasions so that she wouldn't completely, you know, frazzle out on me. And then we had one Scorchio day that came out of, in my books, nowhere. And this is what happened. And uh, yeah, well, even the birds are now foraging around in the pseudobulbs that have dried up and there's a lot of fiber in there for the birds to forage in. And you can see they've even plucked off a growth that had just, you know, kind of cooked. Uh, awkward. I could tell you my reasons, but there's no point because some might interpret it as an excuse. But back while I was procrastinating, I thought I had valid reasons. One of them being fear. Yes, fear. I can elaborate on comments if you want to know more. Anyway, this was pretty much covered in a live stream, a stream that was shambles that I wasn't proud to have on my channel, but I do want to stay transparent on my channel and tell you who's going to leave and when I was doing it during a live stream because it's so much easier when you get immediate feedback and if somebody has a question, I can respond then and there. I guess the orchid gods had different things in mind. So here we are. And yes, now you know. And if you would humor me, despite all this, if you would humor me to subscribe to the channel, I would appreciate that a lot. And a thumbs up, why not, while we're at it. <laughs> 
Thank you so much. Not sure if I should say I hope you enjoyed the video, but I do hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I do appreciate, though, that you watched it to the end. I wish you a fabulous day, though, on the condition that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.